There are many ways to record effects and have them um, retain their channel selection order. Uh, one useful way is to use presets. Uh, presets can contain all different sorts of information, uh, and they are kind of the largest bucket into which we can dump reference data. We can also record effects into presets, although they work a little bit differently. So let's look about how we might use effects and presets together. I'm going to take our outside, our outside blades there, and I'm going to run a color effect on them. So I'm going to create a new effect, effect 817. I'm going to make an absolute effect, and I'm going to once again make our burst effect. I just really like the way that looks. Um, and I'm going to have it go between red and our background state, which in this case is no color. So now I've got this, um, our outside blades there on. I'm going to take those pixels and I'm going to run our color chase on them. And we've got this color chase. I really love the way that this looks. I want to record this, record only, preset one. And then soft key four is plus effects. I want to go ahead and tap plus effects, enter. And it's going to record all of this into preset one. And we see that preset one shows up here. If I clear my stage by hitting clear sneak enter, and now I grab those pixels again, and I tap on the preset, it's going to run that, recall that preset and the effect that is recorded inside of it. What's really neat is it's actually also retaining this channel selection order. So if I grab those pixels again, and I use an offset now of mirror out, and run that same effect. Now I am running that same effect I was just running, effect 817, but I'm running it from the center out on these pixels. Record only, preset two, plus effects, enter. So now I have two presets referencing the same effect. The only thing that's really changing is their channel selection order. So I'm gonna grab my blade pixels again, I'm gonna run preset one on it. Preset one is with the effect recorded from the lowest to highest or left to right. If I run now preset two, it's going to run it from inside out. So it's a way for me to retain that information and keep and stash it somewhere. Any effects information I can record into that. What's nice is I can also record color information and focus information and intensity information into this preset so I can keep these looks kind of together. I can also do the same with focus. So let's go ahead and let's take our, let's take our backlights. We're going to bring them to full. We're going to focus them on our, let's see, our mid stage center. Mid stage center. And I want them running circle effects. So I'm going to create a new effect, effect 818. I'm going to make this a focus. And by default, focus is a circle. Great. So I want every other one of these circles running in opposite direction. So lights one and three, I want moving in one direction lights two and four I want moving in the other direction. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select those backlights again, use my even offset, and I'm going to apply my circle effect. Now I'm just, I want to apply a reverse circle to the other set of channels. So I'm actually just going to take this effect and I'm going to copy it to effect 819. I've just made an exact copy. Go into my effect editor real quick. And I'm going to change my attributes from forward to reverse. Now I'm going to select last. It's going to grab that group again, including my offset. I'm going to hit clear once, choose odd, and choose that second circle. And now I've got two lights moving in one direction and two lights moving in the other direction. So it's kind of every other. I want to record this look for them. So I'm going to grab all of my backlights, record only. Preset three, plus effects, enter. And so now this has been saved. So now, if I sneak them out, all I have to do is grab those backs again, run in that preset, and it's running those two different effects, some running forward, some running backwards, and the intensity and the focus, and all that is piled in there together. It's just a really kind of neat, tidy package to keep that together. Of course, I'd go through and label all these to make sure that I can find them later on. Um, but it's just a, a neat thing, you know, so that it's a really easy when you find these looks you like, you can have quick access to them. They're great busking tools as well if you do manual uh, value busking. So where that's useful is I'm going to sneak everything out off stage. 
because if I come into my setup and I enable direct, uh, direct select double click, that means I can just double click on any of these presets and it's going to recall the channel selection that is recorded into that preset and play back those effects simultaneously. All I have to do is come in here and I just double click on one of these presets and it's going to recall the contents of that preset including effects on that channel selection. For example, if I double tap on uh, the perimeter lights there, it's going to run that effect as well. Now here it looks like I've lost my white values. Um, we were before we were running red over white and now we're just running red over essentially black. And that is actually the case. If we were to look at our live table, we will see that this effect is actually running red over black, or we have zeros in our green, blue, and white uh, columns. The reason for that is, is when we recorded this, we did a record only, which means it only recorded manual values. And the only manual values involved in that was the effect, but because the effect was running on a color parameter, uh, it didn't put in any values for that, so it's coming through as zeros. But what this allows me to do is actually put a background state underneath this. So for example, if I wanted this to run a red effect over blue, I just need to grab those lights and I need to just put them in my dark blue color palette and now I have a red over blue effect. Or a red over yellow effect. Or a red over white effect. So this gets into my whole philosophy of color effects, which we should only have single color effects in a background state because we can make any combination that we want. Um, but the presets can be really powerful ways to hold on to these looks. One gotcha, however, about uh, recording effects in the presets is that unlike other types of reference data, effects uh, don't get nested into presets in the same way. So if I look inside that preset, I can see that I am indeed running uh, effect 817 there. If inside of that preset, I select those same pixels, and instead of running 817, which is the effect that I'm running now, I actually choose my red, dark, blue color chase. You can see that it actually changes the effect that's used in that preset. So if I direct select double click that, it's actually going to go to that red, blue chase we'd had earlier. However, if I back out of this queue, and then I go into it again, you can see that we're not using, we're actually on those, we're still running effect 817 because all the preset was doing was recalling the effect that was in that preset at the time and recording it at the queue level. So one thing to look out for is, you know, just because we have these effects recorded in a preset doesn't mean they act like other types of reference data.